for some more r slash no sleep so today we're going to be reading my grandma just passed away and i found her old journals <clears throat> this is not the not super long so i tried to read kind of slow but yeah my grandma passed away last month i inherited her home it's been in the family for years but my parents have their own home a bit further away so uh now so after my grandma passed it was all left to me my sister and i were going through her belongings the other day and discovered a small wooden chest hidden in the attic it was old, covered in dust, and had a rusty lock that had long since ceased to function. Inside, we found a stack of leather-bound journals, each meticulously dated and filled with Grandma's elegant handwriting. The journals spanned decades from 1960 to the turn of the century. Grandma was always a storyteller, weaving tales of our family's deep roots in the remote corners of the Appalachia, of, yeah, Appalachia but she never mentioned these journals. As I started reading the stories, as I started reading, the stories unfolded with an eerie familiarity, painting a chilling picture of our family history. With each entry, the sense of foreboding grew stronger, and I realized these weren't just stories, these were warnings. And now the past seemed to be clawing its way back into my present. Journal entry, August 15th, 1960. We've settled in Abadi Abingdon, a remote, isolated part of Appalachia. The land here feels ancient, steeped in untold stories and whispers of the past. The locals are superstitious are a superstitious lot with warnings about the woods that surround our new home. They say never to whistle after dark, as it invites the attention of things best left undisturbed. Last night, as the sun set behind the mountains, I felt a strange heaviness in the air, almost as if the mountains themselves were watching us. The wind carried strange faint whispers that seemed to beckon me into the forest. I wonder if moving here was a mistake. Journal entry, October 2nd, 1961. Something strange happened tonight. As dust fell, I heard a distant haunting whistle from the direction of the woods. It sent a shiver down my spine and I hurried inside, bolting the door behind me. Curiosity got the better of me and I peeked through the window. At the edge of the forest, I saw a figure. At first, it looked like a man, but its limbs were unnaturally long and its eyes were glowing with an eerie light. It stood there motionless for what felt like hours before vanishing into the shadows. I didn't sleep at all that night, haunted by the image of those glowing eyes. Later, as the night grew deeper, the sounds of the forest became unnaturally silent, and I heard the creak of the floorboards outside of my bedroom door. I held my breath, straining to hear any movement there, but there was nothing. The air grew colder and a sense of dread seeped into my bones and I knew something was out there, something that didn't belong. Periwinkle Hazel. Journal entry, November 13th, 1965. The air in Abingdon has grown thick with fear. People have been disappeared without a trace. Last night, I was jolted awake by the sound of something whistling outside my window. My heart raced and I peeked through the curtains. There, there, under the moonlight, stood a tall figure. Its eyes were like twin flames burning into my soul. It raised a hand and beckoned its long fingers curling in a gesture that chilled me to my bone. I stayed awake until the first light of dawn, too terrified to move or to make a sound. As the hours dragged on, I heard the sound of soft footsteps circling the house. The floorboards creaked, creaked and the walls seemed to groan under the weight of an unseen presence. I could feel it watching me, a cold, malevolent gaze that pierced through the walls. When dawn finally broke, the oppressive feeling lifted, but the terror lingered. Journal entry, February 9th, 1970. Uncle Bill is gone. He left the house in the dead of night, muttering that he's heard Ma's voice calling out from him from the woods. We tried to stop him, but he was convinced it was her, despite Ma being dead for five years. The search party party found his hat the next day, torn and bloodied. There was no sign of Uncle Bill. The locals whisper about the things that mimic human voices to lure their prey. I can't shake the feeling that something malevolent is watching us, waiting for the moment, right moment to strike. The night he disappeared, the air was thick with fog, and the trees seemed to close in around the house. Shadows danced on the edge of the forest, and I heard faint whispers carried on in the wind. They sounded like Ma, but distorted, wrong. 
As the fog crept crept closer, the whispers grew louder, and I could feel a presence pressing in on all sides. When Uncle Bill stepped into the mist, it swallowed him whole, and the whispers stopped. Journal entry, September 21st, 1980. I found strange tracks behind the old house today. They look like hoof prints, but far larger and deeper than any animal native to these parts. The old timers say it's the devil himself, roaming the hills and looking for souls to claim. They speak of an ancient curse, a pact made by our ancestors with dark forces to protect the land. I used to think these were old wives' tales, but now I'm not so sure. The air is thick with a sense of foreboding, and I can't shake the feeling that someone is watching us from the shadows. As I followed the tracks, I noticed the forest gr growing unnaturally silent. The, the usual sounds of wildlife were absent, replaced by a heavy, oppressive stillness. The tracks led to a clearing where the ground was scorched, as if burned by an intense heat. In the center of the clearing, I saw a figure, tall and gaunt, with eyes that glowed like embers. It turned its gaze towards me, and I felt a wave of dread wash over me. I fled back to the house, but I could still feel its presence following me, a dark shadow that clung to my every step. Journal entry, May 12, 1995. I've seen it with my own eyes. The creature, whatever it is. I was out checking traps when I felt an overwhelming sense of dread, as if I was being watched. I turned and saw a creature emerging from the woods. It shifted forms, part human, part beast. Its eyes burning with unnatural light. It let out a growl, a sound that seemed to vibrate through my very bones. I ran, stumbling and tripping in my haste, but I never looked back. Even now, I can feel its eyes on me, a malevolent present that haunts my every step. The night after my encounter, I heard scratching at my window. I dared not to look, but the sound was persistent, a slow, deliberate scraping that set my nerves on edge. I covered my ears, but the voice, but the noise only grew louder, more insistent. Finally, I mustered up the courage to peek through the curtains, and there it was, the skinwalker. Its face pressed against the glass, eyes glowing in unworldly hunger. I screamed and it vanished, but I knew it would be back. <laughs> Journal entry, December 31st, 1999. Tonight there's an electricity in the air, as if something monumental is about to happen. The wind carries strange whispers, and I hear the faintest, most unsettling sounds of the whistling. They say the new millennial will bring, bring up, will bring change, but I fear it's bringing something else. Something ancient, something hungry. As midnight approaches, the feel of dread grows stronger. The shadows seem to move on their own, and I swear I saw a pair of gro glowing eyes staring at me in the edge of the forest. I can't shake the feeling that some... That the that the past is catching up with us and whatever it is is coming for me as the clock struck midnight the house was plunged into darkness the wind howled the walls groaned as if under immense pressure i heard footsteps slow and deliberate moving through the house the air grew colder and i could see my breath in the dim light the whispers grew louder more insistent and the shadows seemed to wither and twist writhe and twist i felt a cold hand on my shoulder and I turned to see a face, pale and gaunt, with eyes that glowed like coals. It whispered my name, and I felt my blood run cold. And that was the end of the entries. As I closed the last journal, a faint whistle drifts through the air, sending a chill down my spine. My hands tremble as I lock the doors and draw the curtains. The tales of a bing-dong aren't just stories. They're a, leg they're a legacy of fear and darkness passed down through generations. I realize that now by reading these journals, I've awakened something that should have remained buried. For the longest time, I believed in this, but only since reading the journals have these instances started happening firsthand to me. <laughs> the nights are long and sleepless. I hear the haunting whistle every night growing closer and with each passing hour. Shadows dance just beyond the tree line, and the air is thick with the weight of untold secrets. I know I have to leave this place, but deep down, I fear there's some things you can't run from. The past has a way of catching up, especially in a bing-dong. I love this family home, but I'm afraid I can't stay here much longer. Can you imagine something like that happening? Just like, just out of nowhere you think that your family is like, fine and normal, but then like someone dies and you find like old journals and then you read and this shit happens. Like you can't make this up.
especially from someone that's like born like back in the day like you can't make any of the shit up like can you just imagine that and then you realized oh shit i've been hearing the same stuff well i'm fucked that would be creepy as all hell anyways i hope you all enjoyed that i'm not sure how spooky that was but it's it's kind of creepy if you think about it if you like you know really think about it but i hope you all enjoyed this one and you know what to do. Any sound description. I love you guys, and I will see you guys later. Bye bye.